Hello YouTube and welcome to today's episode of The Shredding Skeptic. Today we're going to be taking a look at Total War Attila. Now this is a review I've been trying to get up and running for quite some time, but it's been a little while since I've had serious startup issues with a game I've purchased off of Steam. Now, I took a look at some of the forums and the support for game crashes was, well, let's just say it kind of dominated the threads. So. These threads dated all the way back to about February 20th, and we are now getting towards the end of April, and it doesn't look like any of them had any clear fixes. So unfortunately, I wasn't able to get anything uh, up and running with the Hun campaign, uh, so I have had to uh, settle on using the Persian Empire. So it is uh, a faction I've played as in the past, so unfortunately, uh, with this brand new game, I am sort of stuck going back to uh, something I have felt like I've played before. Now, this is a uh, very cookie-cutter Total War. If you've played any of the previous series, uh, again, it's pretty much more of the same. I mean, some of the environments may look a little bit different. You're going to have uh, a few different units here and there, different factions. But to be honest, I, I just can't seem to convince myself to care. This, this game just doesn't really seem to be all that much different from the previous ones. And again, your experience is going to be largely the same. If you're familiar with modern-day Turkey, that's pretty much where we're uh, located right now. We've run into our first conflict with the Roman Empire up towards the uh, old Anatolia region. So in that spirit, we're going to be taking a look at a couple of different modes today, one of them being the dominant Phrygian, as well as the Lydian mode. So we're going to take a listen to see what those two sound like. That is definitely one of my favorite modes to work in when shredding. I particularly love the fact that it's able to mix both a flat second as well as a major third, and that uh, spacing between those notes definitely adds some great tonal characteristics to your solos. Now, switching back over to uh, Total War here, if you're unfamiliar with any of these uh, previous games, they do operate a little bit differently than the uh, StarCraft or WarCraft games that you may have played in the past. Morale, for one, plays a huge role in how how your troops are going to behave on the battlefield, and this uh, adds an element of strategy that's uh, a little bit more in depth than simply sending all of your units rushing towards, uh, you know, the enemy, basically. So each one of the units is uh, paired with what would be the sort of rock, paper, scissors equivalent of its worst adversary. So if you got a bunch of horsemen, they're great against archers, but not so good against spearmen. So you want to make sure to uh, position your units and your troops in such a way that's going to maximize their capabilities as well as minimize any vulnerabilities they might face from uh, your enemy units. In this particular battle, I am operating with a force of over 6,000 men, and to me it seemed like the AI they were using was not as good as in previous games. Now, this could also be because this is a much larger force than I'm uh, normally used to working with, and my inability to micromanage my troops may have uh, been the cause of that. In the middle screen, we can see an example of the diplomacy that's popped up during one of my opponent's turns. In this case, it's the Romans begging for mercy. We're not going to acquiesce to that particular demand because we want to make sure that we can continue to push westward into the Roman territory, and if we were to sign a peace treaty, that's basically going to give us the choice of either compromising our integrity to the rest of the world and going back to war, uh, or it's going to have us stop dead in our tracks. And considering that we have the advantage at this point, there is really no reason to not continue pushing forward. 
During each turn, each opponent is going to have the ability to engage you in diplomacy. Most of the time, they're going to be requesting either money or assistance in a war. And if you're familiar with Robert Greene's Laws of Power, it's very uh, unwise to commit yourself to any one particular faction if it's not going to be in your direct interest. It's best to remain formless and not really commit to anybody. Don't get dragged into wars unnecessarily, it's going to just drain your bank account. For this particular battle, we were actually able to draw the Romans into a trap. By attacking one of their cities and then quickly retreating, we were able to divert a large portion of their standing force to chase us off into the woods. And as we drew them further and further into our territory, we were able to separate them and then pick off the individual units. It's often best to never fight the enemy on their terms. You always want to fight them on yours. Although we weren't able to push quite as far as Lydia, we are going to take a quick listen to the Lydian mode so that we can hear what it would sound like at the after party right after the battle. 